Okay, so increasing the aesthetic appeal, that's the obvious reason. But from a neuroscience point of view, I'm gonna suggest there are deeper reasons why slow motion works. And this leads to my suggestion number two, which is that slow motion film serves as a proxy for denser memories. So a few moments ago, I told you what happens during a life-threatening situation. Although you don't actually see the event unfold in slow motion, the denser memories that you have make it seem like it must have been that way in retrospect because there's a greater than normal amount of detail when the memory is read back out. And I suggest that slow motion film is a stand-in, a substitute for this extra dense memory. By watching a movie scene slowly, we get to enjoy a rich experience with plenty of time to dwell on all the details that would normally streak right past us. We have the opportunity to attend to the details and commit them to memory, just like we have after a real life high adrenaline moment. In other words, slow motion film recreates the sensation of grasping all the details. And this explains the natural partnership of slow motion videography with high adrenaline moments. It's no accident that the first time it really got used was the ambush death scene of Bonnie and Clyde. The director, Arthur Penn, said in an interview, quote, the intention there was to get this attenuation of time that one experiences when you see something like a terrible automobile accident, end quote. And giving the audience a heightened ability to catch and remember details worked well, and it's become a standard signature of high-stakes moments. 